From the Premier League to grassroots, referees are seen as football's fault guys. Every week, up and down the country, three officials prepare themselves to try and take control of 22 players. Ready when you are, gents, please. Thanks. But what if every move they made was captured on their own personal camera? This could be a game changer for referees and for football. Careful! I'm calling it. It's La Manera. It's La Manera. Yo. My name is Jacob Colshaw. I'm an amateur footballer and I'm on a journey to find out whether body cameras should be worn by football referees. The FA have planned a body camera trial for grassroots referees in 2023. But will this really help the people that make our game happen? This is The Ref Cam. The FA issued 380 bans to players and coaches for attacking or threatening match officials in grassroots football last season. Body cameras are seen as one of the ways to help referees combat this. Meet Lewis Ward, Jason Coombs, Stuart Griffiths three semi-professional F8 referees. I met them at half-time during a match to open up the discussion around wearing a body cam in a match situation. Would you guys be up for, like, if a body cam didn't come into referee at this level? 100%. 100%. Well, not at this level. Not very no, much. No, right. I, I, there is a video of Jared Gillett, one of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when he was over there, they mic'd him up and... I don't think they body cammed him in that game, no. but mic'd him up was interesting. Brilliant. And they have body cammed a few, haven't they, in... In Europe, like, so today we're out as a three. On but today you look at today, there's there's lads are 16 years old out on pitches on their own in the middle of nowhere with two teams yeah. that really, that, you know, that are totally people that are just playing football just because it's a game and something to do on a Saturday rather than something serious, isn't it? If it occurs player behaviour naturally, it might make some players think twice about when they're not wearing body cams. It's something that's been in rugby for. Yeah. A long time, hasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. The, the, mic, they, up the mic section. Yeah. You know what's happening. Well, I did. I heard. We talked about it at a call meeting a couple of years ago, and one of the guys that's on the prem, was on the prem, was saying that the reason they can't mic referees up is because they wouldn't want to broadcast it. Because the player's language, but also the referee language, and you can kind of lip read a little bit sometimes and go, mm. right, he's just told him to <laughs> this, that, and the other. Which obviously we don't get away with at this level. Yeah. As Stuart mentioned, rugby leads the way with referee communication. Despite this, a survey completed by the State of Mind with St Helens and Huddersfield Referee Societies found that 82% had received abuse while refereeing, 91% supported the use of body cameras. Referee mental health expert Gail Hope is a strong supporter of body cameras coming into the game. With the referee having a body cam on, there's going to be evidence of ex-player threatening him. Evidence of... Um, abuse, evidence of assault, evidence that they can then go to the FA and go, right, now tell me this didn't happen. I mean, quite why they, they don't just bring it in from, from January when football comes back after the World Cup, I don't know. Why make it wait until sort of next season? They could easily have brought it in after the break if they'd have wanted to, but because um, the legislation is now there from IFAB. I spoke with the former Premier League and international referee Keith Hackett. Keith explained the impact body cameras could have on future officials. It's, it's those film clips, if you like, that you use to educate other referees <clears throat> and bring referees through. And you might then change your mode of operation. Uh, you know, as an example, I was involved in... A, a mass confrontation between Manchester United and Arsenal. And it became the Battle of Old Trafford, where 21 players in a 16 second period were all having a go at each other. How will the referee be able to sort it all out? I didn't send anybody off because I said, if I sent one off, I'd have to send 21. But out of that, we de developed a process. We've got to also understand that the, the professional level there's already a minimum of 22 cameras. So you can interrogate. It's less of a, of a requirement at the elite level to have body cameras. Um, but certainly at grassroots, I think it's, it's becoming almost a requirement. 
<laughs> I think I was getting emails yesterday about someone saying, oh, if your game gets called off, let me know, because I've got four more that haven't got a ref at the moment, so, because it's just not enough. Thank you, cheers. Chris Dixon is a grassroots official looking to climb the referee ladder. He was keen to stress both sides of the body camera debate. Obviously, there's so many games across the country. Obviously, it's a huge development, a huge investment financially, I suppose, to do that. But at the same time, if it stops one person being on the end of the assault, probably worth it. I guess the important thing would be to make everybody aware, rather than me just turning up today with a sort of secret little camera or something, it's probably not really going to help because, OK, someone might then assault me or something, and obviously we've got it all on video and stuff. But if they knew it was there, it might stop it happening, which is better for me. Although at the same time, if you're going to do that and you then say, you know, you've not given it to everyone, what happens when you don't have it and people know? So you kind of may be opening up problems there, I suppose. But I guess there's pros and cons to everything. So. The ref cam journey finishes in the USA. Dave Kaka is one of the hardest working referees you can meet. Having officiated over 600 games in the last year, he believes the introduction of body cameras could help change the culture in football. It teaches everything that you would want young people to learn. How to be respectful, how to respond to authority figures, how to deal with what's set in front of you for young men, how to be a gentleman while competing in a contact sport where emotions are high. Can you control that? And as a parent as well, and having seen thousands of kids over the last 10 so years, a lot of these kids need that because they don't have it at home and they don't have it in school. If we within football can offer a place where, hey, there are standards here. If you don't meet them, there are consequences. And, and this is what life is going to be like, real life.